Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Um, trying to finish up on this um, series of classes dealing with a Feast of Weeks or Pentecost or Shavuot. Depends on what you call it. We've already gone through a lot of these points. We've talked about the who is required to keep the Feast of Weeks. We talked about what we are supposed to do to celebrate the feast and we're going to to uh, talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. We're going to talk a little bit more about what we are to do to celebrate the feast. We've already talked about when exactly the feast dates are, talked about where we are supposed to celebrate the feast. We're going to talk a little bit more about why we are to keep the feast and how we are to keep the feast. Now these aren't in order and so I'm going to try to pick up on these last few points as I go. Got a few more verses so y'all stick with me. All right, so let's pick up where we left off here at verse 19. Again, we have the ESV over there on the right-hand side, but we're going to read from the King James Version. It says, Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. Okay, now one of the things we have to point out is that the Feast of Weeks turns out to be a sin offering a time when we make a sin offering and we can go back to Leviticus and see what the sin offering um, entails well, one of the things that I want to point out here because I know there's a wide range of people that are listening to this some of you guys are brand new and I want want you to know um, there is sort of a build-up to the type of sacrifice you were to make for a sin offering lambs and goats are kind of far down the road as far as you know the spiritual walk is concerned because the Lord has the, the our Father in heaven has to have time in order to give you these these animals to make the sacrifice but it, it doesn't really start there um, it really starts off with a bread offering or a meal offering or what the Bible calls a meat offering but you can read that back in Leviticus how it kind of starts off with meal offerings and then goes through um, birds before you ever get to lambs and goats and and you know you can even progress up to cattle but again you, you you would have to have the father to provide you with these animals unless you have them already okay now it's up here in Leviticus chapter 4 that we read about the sin offering and what it entails I don't want to get in too deep as far as the sin offering is concerned I may do that in another video but let me stop right here verse 29 he says and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering and the priest shall take the blood thereof with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar and he shall take away the fat thereof as the fat is taken away off the sacrifice of peace offering and the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savior unto the Lord and the priest shall make atonement for him for it shall be forgiven him alright now I want to point out this particular part here it is a sacrifice they are sacrificing an animal here in this picture but notice the parts that he's, he's calling out specifically and go ahead and read the whole chapter in case I'm missing something but I do want to point out that it's the fat and the blood that it that he's calling out specifically. The fat and the blood are to be done away with. He's pouring the blood out. The fat is being burned on the altar. Well, guess what you do with the rest of the animal? Well, it becomes like a a, a meal. It they eat it, you know. And that's what a lot of these feasts are. They they seem to be barbecues. But I covered that in another class. So I'm gonna go ahead to verse 20. He says, and the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. Now, what's going on here is 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 actually overly overly simplified to the point where it's hard to believe that they're actually just just waving this these loaves and this flesh here. They're just waving it before the Lord as if the priest were to hold it up before the Lord and to hold it up before the congregation and wave it and says look look what coach has offered but then after they wave it they ate it you know it became a huge feast that's why, why they call these feast days is because they ate all of this food and we're talking a lot of people and we're talking a lot a lot of food that they that they ate during this time all right let me go on to 21 and ye shall proclaim on the self same day 
that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Now, I know there's a lot in this in this compilation video once I get it all put together. But as far as the how we are to um, celebrate the feast, I do want to pull out this verse right here because and give a little part of my testimony. Um, going all the way back um, when I first read the book of uh, Leviticus when I first read this book Exodus um, and Genesis and Deuteronomy and Numbers 2 I was first of all I was by myself I didn't really have any uh, support from any other ministers or any other Bible believers or or any church people or anything like that telling me what how I was supposed to feel about what I was reading so it it, it I kind of took it upon myself naturally to read and comprehend what I was reading and this is what jumped out at me first was you shall do no servile work therein I didn't have anything to sacrifice I didn't have you know any knowledge of any of this other stuff that was going on but I did know how to take off work and take a day of rest and that to me was what it started off as being for many many years when I when I honored these feasts when I celebrated these feasts it was uh, merely taking off work being by myself and you know I thought about it for a while I thought about it for a long time okay how is this actually working and to sum it up in one sentence or less what it seems to me is like once you took off work once you put yourself in a position where you could serve the Lord or work from a, a, away from the daily grind you were in a position where you could serve the Lord the Holy Spirit within is what actually went through these steps and these processes and actually done did this stuff for us. It's like the Holy Spirit was performing all of these um, rituals and acts on a spiritual nature behind the scenes. And all the thing I really had to do was to take off work behind it. Now, I have grown since then. I, I, I have um, matured in my spiritual walk, and I do do a lot more as far as the feasts are concerned now. But that's within the last few years. Um, and and not to take away from any, any of what I said before, I do notice that in the last few years, when I have been trying to uh, perform these feasts, uh, closer to what the book actually says actually making uh, sacrifices and you know and and the way that it's saying here um, my spiritual growth has increased exponentially so you have the two parts and I'm, I'm and I understand I'm, I'm, I'm telling you two different parts and I'm kind of leaving it up to you and the father leaving it up to you and the father to decide how you're going to actually do this but on one hand the bare minimum is you have to take off work. We, 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 we did the um, calculations and the date is on uh, June the 11th. So you need to go ahead and call in sick on that day. Call, call in vacation that day. If you work for the government um, here in the United States, that's supposed to be a holiday for you. You're supposed to be able to take that, out, take that day off as a religious holiday. But, you know, I really never had the opportunity to take, take advantage of that. You know, when I found myself in a workplace you know, or having a job that I could not get off work for a particular feast or something like that, guess what I did? Yeah, I went to work and actually didn't do any work. You know, it was some days where I was actually able to do training or actually, you know, those days were a good day to be, you know, reading the SOPs or, you know, the, the regulations or whatever it is. But whatever, but whatever it was, I mean, I, I would go do observations. I would find something to get out of actually doing work. Even though I was in the workplace, I wasn't physically doing any work. Now, I'm just giving that as part of my testimony. Um, you can do with it as you will. Comment if you if you think I was in error or something. It may, may make for a good discussion. Now, another thing I want to point out at this part right here where he says forever. This jumped out at me all those many years ago, and I presented this to the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, and I said, you know, uh, what does forever mean? Does that mean we're supposed to stop? You know, forever means forever. And look what he says, throughout your generation. So we're still supposed to be doing these feasts. Forever means forever. It means it never stops. But let's go on to 22. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor, 
and to the stranger, I am the Lord your God. Okay, now this verse falls under the why too. Remember, these are harvest feasts. These are uh, harvest celebrations. Um, we go before the Lord and we, we perform these celebrations in order so, so that he will bless our harvest, right? And it don't always mean agriculture. You know, it, you know, your blessings could come in other forms, especially if you live nowhere close to a farm. You can imagine that your blessings will come in other forms. Uh, you know, it could be related to the type of work that you you do, or it could be related to the ministry that you do, or it could be related to just your 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 personal quality of life and you know how things are going for you. It could be, but it is a agricultural type feast. It is a harvest feast, and like I said, over the years I have matured, and now I do actually have fields of uh, food growing. I have. Um, I live on a off-grid homestead now, praise the Lord, um, and I attributed the acquisition of that farmland to these feasts. I, I actually do. I got I got the land during the Jubilee year, and uh, I can look back at the previous years, not years, but the previous year, I'm going to say 2014 and 2015, when I really started, you know, trying to perform the feast to the letter that you know I found myself you know getting a piece of land and now we grow stuff and so why do we keep all of the feasts or why do we keep in particular the feast of weeks is so that we can we can have an abundant harvest but look what he's saying here in 22 he says and when you reap the harvest of the land meaning after you've gotten the harvest you've gone through these feasts you've you've um, um, prepared yourself, you know, spiritually using using the uh, scripture there as a blueprint to prepare yourself, and and now you know we're expecting to get a harvest. But look what he says here. He says, and thou shalt make and thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of that field when thou reapest. Let me come up here to the ESV and see what it says. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to the edge, meaning that you should leave one. This is about sharing, guys. We, we, we've done the feast so we can have an abundant harvest but look what he's telling us right here at the end of the feast it's like it's like it really doesn't belong here but he's he's telling us okay now that you have gotten this abundant harvest he's saying to share it to get it to to make sure that those who are less fortunate have the opportunity to come to your field and pick some of your vegetables he's saying when you go out there to harvest your vegetables leave some out there so it's saying right there, nor shall you gather the gleanings after the harvest. Meaning you don't after you've after you've harvested your field, you don't go back there and pick it clean. You don't back go back out there and make sure there's nothing left. You actually do leave some food out there. That is a biblical requirement to leave food in your field. All right? Then it says, You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. All right? All right, so the Feast of Weeks, we have who is who is required to keep the Feast of Weeks. Now, we talked about this earlier. It is the Israelites. The Israelites are required to keep the Feast. Um, you can put a caveat on it, or the scripture does, you know, give, you, give room for a caveat that says if you have um, received the land and gotten a harvest, but I would be careful with that because... You know, he may be talking about on a spiritual nature, and we could mess up if we if we make the assumption that he's talking about material harvest and say, well, I haven't seen any harvest when he's actually talking about a spiritual harvest and turns out you have an abundance of that. You could be in error and you could find yourself going backwards if you miss that feast. I realize I'm trying to pack as much information in this video as I possibly can, but I wanted to pull out Deuteronomy 16 and 16 before I close it out. And it's talking about three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Let me pull out, pull out a few points here. Because I think it's really important. One is he's talking about these three times in a year. And he names them down there. Unleavened bread, weeks, and tabernacles. Those are three mandatory feasts. They are considered mandatory feasts. 
all of thy males, see what it says right there, all of thy males must appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. Now, in the place where he should, shall choose, I always, you know, looked at that like, wonder, what did he mean by the place that he shall choose? And it's really only now in the third era that we understand that he's talking about. He's talking about that spiritual temple, a temple that lives inside of us. It's the the, the uh, brick and mortar temples have all been knocked down, and but we do understand that the third temple will be built on our heart, and this is the place that he's choosing, and this is the place that he's talking about. And then the last point in there, he says, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Yeah, again, these are sacrificial feasts, guys. What are we to do to celebrate the feast? Well, the the um, first of all is taking off work. That's one of the main things is taking off work. Another thing would be prayer and uh, and and it looked like there was a bit of communion mixed in with it. But there's several other rules. There's actually sacrifices involved in it. Now I'm not gonna. I don't want to take this video to push any type of sacrifices or anything like that because you know I don't know what you have or what you're capable of and all of that kind of stuff. But you know that that lines up with what we are supposed to be doing all right when is the exact date of the feast we said it was June the 11th June the 11th is the exact date and um, where are we supposed to celebrate the feast in, in your own home you know we say these are like barbecues but you're not really going to expect the whole community to show up I don't care how much food and wine you have they just not gonna come out for a holy day feast so it's going to be amongst you and probably your family you know there at your home you know that you will perform this feast not necessarily you know we don't have to have a temple or we don't have to have a tent or something that we don't travel off to go do these feasts like they've done in the past we do them in our dwelling places in all of our dwelling places um, then it says, why are we to keep the feast? These are harvest feasts. We, we serve the Lord in this manner so that we can receive uh, those blessings that he has in store for us. Um, we really can't expect to receive um, any type of harvest, whether it's a uh, material harvest or a spiritual harvest, unless we are obedient to his statutes. And these, this is one of his statutes, the uh, Feast of Weeks. How are we supposed to celebrate the feast? Let me just talk for the guys who are brand new, the guys who, you know, have no opportunity, no real opportunity to, to make any type of sacrifices. Um, just make sure you take the day off. Make sure you take the day off work um, and, you know, spend some, some time away from anything that could distract you. Like it may not be the day to go shopping. It's not the day to, you know, wash the truck or whatever. Take the day off work and spend some time in prayer. So that the so that the the spirit inside of you can do its work, so it can go before the Father and get the necessary atonement for you. All right, guys. Uh, sorry for the noise. I'm on a bus headed back home. Um, I was hoping to get this finished before I got home. That's why I'm doing it on a bus. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this posted up. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, any clarifications or anything we, we, we appreciate uh, you know all you guys for making your comments and such all right uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this posted up y'all pray for us Hermes Academy power of patience continence and faith we teach virtues